What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's episode, I want to talk to you real briefly about pre-front and post-frontal fishing. Uh, some things that you want to do, some things that you want to avoid to be able to get out here and have a successful day on the water when you have these adverse weather conditions that are moving in and out throughout our seasons. Uh, I'm also going to talk real briefly on some things that are happening in and around the Low Country Fishing brand, as well as some personal things that are going on that I want to share with you. So if you're interested in sticking around and hearing about all this stuff, you got to stay tuned. All right, first and foremost, my family and I, we are moving. We are leaving Savannah and we're moving south. Uh, we're not moving too far south. We're only going down to Richmond Hill, Georgia. Uh, Richmond Hill is honestly about 20 to 30 miles to the south of Savannah. It's the very next town uh, down on a, uh, on a map. And we're moving down there because we have secured two acres of land. We plan on building a custom built home as soon as we can get these uh, building construction material prices to level out. If any of you guys know that are messing with wood or materials or looking at building your own house or even purchasing a house, everything is extremely elevated right now, building materials especially. So we're gonna wait until those prices come down, then we're gonna break ground. That seems to be the uh, financially smart thing to do. Now, in the meantime, we've secured a home in Richmond Hill, which is awesome. Uh, it's only gonna be a couple minutes down the road actually from where our property is gonna be. Uh, so we'll be able to stay close enough and I'll be able to keep an eye on that as the build process goes on. And I'm actually going to uh, do a little bit of filming. It'll be the back on land episodes and just kind of update you guys on some of that for those that are interested in seeing what's going on there. Now, one of the great things that is going to come from me living just slightly south is it's going to open me up to fish new areas. Uh, it's going to open me up to fish in the St. Catharines Sound a lot more. It's going to open up Sapelo Sound. It's going to open up Dubois or Doughboy Sound, however you say it. And even all the way down to Brunswick. These are areas that I will be able to access and be about 30 minutes closer than normal. So I won't have quite a long commute um, leaving my current house to get the, to these types of areas. Now, one of the interesting parts about this is you guys will be able to ride along with me on all of these trips. Honestly, you guys, I'm gonna break down Barney style, how I look and find and locate fish in these new areas. If you guys don't know already, I like to fish multiple spots, multiple areas because it continues to challenge me as an angler. I don't go to the same spots over and over again catch fish, hold up my fish. Like you see a lot of these guys on Instagram and social media and whatnot, they're holding up a picture of a fish and you're thinking, man, this guy's crazy consistent. Well, he is because he's going back to the same spot over and over again. I don't do that. I like to continuously move around and try new areas and I will do that with you guys. So I will show you guys all the tips, everything that I do and everything that goes into locating fish in a new area, you guys are gonna learn because I'm gonna be out there fishing and talking about it. So I'm very excited to uh, pump out that type of content for you guys. All right, so the second thing is I am working on my merchandise and the website. Now, all the merchandise will be for sale on the website. That's why I'm not releasing my products the way I used to. Before, I used to just kind of advertise what I had and you guys would just kind of communicate with me through Facebook and we would do PayPal and all that stuff. I'm not doing that anymore. I've, I'm creating a website where you guys will have a one-stop shop to go to to get information on things that are going on in our local community. I'll have a tips page, a bunch of really, really helpful tips broken down, a bunch of really cool articles that I'm in the middle of writing. You'll have a merchandise page where you'll be able to go and purchase hats, shirts, decals, all this merchandise that I'm in the middle of making, as well as the next tab. I won't talk about it, but it's something that's gonna be very interesting to me. Um, it's going to be a new path and a new direction for low country fishing. I'm super excited. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while and I'm getting all the fine details lined out with it. Uh, but uh, for the few select out there that are going to be interested in that, it's going to be amazing. I can tell you. Uh, so that's it for what's going on with the, uh, the merchandise and kind of the things that are going on in and around the low country fishing brand. All right. And the final thing that I want to talk about is fishing in these pre front and post front conditions. Now this morning I woke up to about 48 degrees here at the house and uh, it's it's crazy. The wind was has been howling the last couple days. It's been howling the whole month for that part, uh, but it has actually brought the northeast, the cold northeast wind down with it. And it has changed uh, the way these fish eat and the way these fish react. Now with fishing a pre front and post front, there's I'm gonna break it down into two, into the pre front and into the post front. What you need to know about pre-front fishing is it's good. It's very good. 
anytime that you guys can see a weather system that's starting to work in, if you can get out there and fish the day before this weather system hits or even the day of the weather system hitting, uh, the fishing is gonna be really, really good. Um, the reason it's gonna be good is because of the barometric pressure changes that happens in our environment. Now, as this pressure changes, it affects the way the fish react on the water. As, this, as the storm fronts push in, the pressure increases, and that basically takes that swim bladder, or sorry, that air bladder that's inside this fish. Here's a little um, anatomy uh, lesson on fish for you guys. Fish have basically an organ in their body called an air bladder. As the barometric pressure increases and that pressure pushes down on these fish, it squeezes that organ. So that organ goes from about this size and squeezes it down inside their stomach to about this size for say, this is just an example. And what it does is, it, is those fish sense a change. They know something is happening, something's changing in their environment. They all of a sudden have room in their stomach to eat and it, it turns on a dinner bell for them and it gets them aggressive to get out there and eat. So when you're out here fishing these pre-front conditions, get out here and throw large baits. Large baits all day long. That's a great way to catch really big fish because all the fish are gonna be eating and everything is gonna be eating ravagely. It's insane. The pre-front bite is off the chain if you guys can get out there and fish it. So now let's talk about post-front. So with post-front fishing, it's actually the opposite of what happens on a pre-front. Uh, with pre-front, the pressure increases, that, that air bladder squeezes down and the fish get hungry. As that storm pushes through, the, bare the barometric pressure starts to drop, allowing, gra allowing gravity, the force of gravity to come back up and that tight air bladder now starts to swell and starts to expand. And what's going on is this, is, this, this motion, this movement right here is happening inside their stomach. As this happens, these fish start to get full. They start to get a little sick feeling. They don't feel well. And the last thing they wanna do, you guys, is honestly eat. So that's why fishing can be extremely difficult after these fronts or post-front fishing. Now, some of the ways you can combat this is to figure out where are these fish going to go. Now, as the, as the air bladder and the fish expand, these fish have to do one thing to control their nausea or their sickness feeling that they have, and that's to go deep. As fish suspend deeper into the water column, the force of gravity is a little bit greater. The same as when you jump into a swimming pool and your ears pop because of the pressure, same thing happens to the fish. They go deep, so that pressure can now push in that air bladder and get it tightened back, out, back down, and they can feel better. And it is in that deeper water that you are gonna find these fish. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to leave your certain creek areas where you were catching fish two weeks two weeks ago and head out into the middle of the river where it's 40 foot deep you, that's not what you do you stay in that similar area where you were catching fish but you look for the nearby depth change you go within 50 to 100 yards of that area and you search for deeper water and that's where you're going to find these fish so if you're throwing artificials like i do you need to get back into that winter pattern of throwing small baits working them very slow bouncing them off the bottom get in that finesse style fishing mentality because it's, it's that small bait that's going to allow these fish hopefully the mindset of hey that's it that's an easy little small meal i don't feel great but i'm not starving but i definitely want to eat that because it's small and it's easy to get to and hopefully these small baits is what's going to trigger that bite now for you guys that are fishing live bait i honestly i would put the popping corks away i would not worry about suspending my bait too much i would get my bait down to the bottom so get just enough weight on that carolina rig on these knocker rigs uh, or just your, your pinch on weight however you like to get your bait down get it down to the bottom uh, and get it down there on these deeper areas especially on these deeper ledges if you're looking for these trout and whatnot because uh, that's where you're, honestly that's where you're going to find these fish and that should be a good enough plan downsize your hook downsize to the smaller baits that you can possibly get that's where it really comes into play these little uh, two inch shrimp throw on like a 1-0 uh, circle hook, and hopefully that's good enough to, uh, to trigger a bite. But I can tell you guys, post front fishing is some of the most difficult times to get out there and fish and try to catch these fish. So if that's the only day that you have to get out on the water to fish, just understand that that's kind of the conditions that you're getting into. Um, and you know, it, it is what it is. Now, this information that I'm giving you is not 100%. It doesn't mean this happens every single time to the fish. Fish, uh, fish defy science. Every time I go out, it, it seems uh, they'll bite sometimes when they're not supposed to be biting. They'll be shallow when they're supposed to be deep. And, and 
and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, sometimes you just got to get out there and see what's going on. But I just want to arm you guys with a little bit of information on what's happening with these fish pre-front and post-front. So that's going to be it for today's episode, you guys. Thank you so much for uh, hanging in there with me. Uh, for those of you who made it to the end, uh, I'm going to get back in here and pack up the rest of this house. It's an absolute tornado in here, uh, but I got my moving team coming tomorrow. So we're doing last final minute detail preps, basically shove it in a box and let's get it to the next house. Uh, so thank you guys again for all the support. Uh, if you would like to leave a comment, go ahead and comment below. If you haven't got a chance to subscribe to Low Country Fishing, this is the first time seeing my videos. Um, thanks. Welcome to the channel. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing some really good fishing content, check out um, the rest of my videos. This wasn't a week that I was able to get out and fish, obviously because of the move, but I guarantee you, if you guys check out my videos, I think you will definitely like it. Uh, if you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to tell a friend, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, all that stuff. So that's it, you guys. I'm going to head back inside and see what uh, the boxes are up to because they're not going to obviously fill themselves. <laughs> Take care. God bless.